The graphics card I have on my hand today is the AMD Radeon HD 7790 1GB Shopper Dual X version. If we look at the back of the PCB, we can see the screws got rusted because it's almost 9 years old. Last time it was available in Bangladesh in 2014 with a hefty 15,000 taka price tag, almost 200 US dollars. Hopefully, I can open the heatsink for thermal paste reinstallation. Now, let's talk about the I.O. It has one display port, one HDMI, two DVI ports, including one dual link DVI. According to my testing, you can only access high refresh rate while connecting your monitor to the dual link DVI port. It requires 6 pin PCI power to run. Has two large fans running at almost 2500 RPM. Capable of cooling this graphics card very well. If you look closely, you can see there are a lot of white spots on the surface of the GPU. I try to remove them using alcohol and other cleaning liquids, but nothing worked. But was able to clean the off-white surface, looking like brand new. Now it's time to open the GPU and reinstalling the thermal paste which I have shown many times in my videos. So I'm going to skip it now. All left to do is to install the GPU into the computer, install the necessary drivers, finding the device ID by going into the device manager, searching with the device ID in Google is the best way to download any type of drivers. The first game I'm going to test here is Rocket League. Running the game with DirectX 11 at 1080p high settings with uncapped frame rate. V-Sync and anti-aliasing are turned off, but all the other settings like high quality shaders, ambient collision, depth of field, bloom, light flares, dynamic shadow, motion blur, weather effects, transparent goalposts are enabled. The average FPS I was getting is 68 and the 0.1% lowest FPS was 55. The game ran very smoothly without any hitches with 100% GPU utilization. The next game is Fortnite running at 1032p which is in windowed mode for 1080p. Frame rate set to unlimited, graphics quality set to auto, 3D resolution is 100%, view distance is near, Shadow, anti-aliasing, v-sync, and motion blur is disabled. Texture, effect, and processing are set to low. All of these settings are running under Windows 11. The game is running very smoothly without any problem. When inside the bus, game runs above 80 FPS but drops to 70 plus as soon as I jump. The map loads very fast even though it has only a gigabyte of memory to work with. To show you guys, I am actually running this game on Radeon HD 7790. No smoke and mirrors. Back into the game, I got two noobs or bots, most probably bots. They were fighting one another. I had nothing but a few grenades. I started the fight throwing the nades at them. They noticed and started shooting at me. I tried every trick I had to stay alive and was able to kill them at last. Next game is Watch Dogs, not the latest version, the first one. It's running at 1080p with 3x GPU buffer, FXA on. So why the hell I am testing this one? Well, it was released back in 2014, almost the same time this GPU was released. And I wanted to see how much this game was able to utilize this graphics card. The average FPS was 63. It only came down to lower 50s only when there was some big explosions. Next up is GTA 5. As usual, the resolution is 1080p. FXA, MXA, VSync is turned off. Every other settings is set to normal even though it was released in 2013 on consoles but delayed till 2015 for PC. There is a huge fan base of GTA 5 for PC Till this day. You can do a lot in GTA Online with your friends. The game runs smoothly with more than 
110 fps most of the time without any hitches and only was dropped to 96 fps lowest with a big explosion. As this game runs very smoothly, I am going to increase the settings to push the graphics card a little more. Increasing the texture quality to very high, shader to high, shadow to high and the reflection quality to ultra that increases our VRAM requirement to 2 GB. But I am going to ignore that for now. There are no starters with the average FPS I got is 65. Let's try to export some vehicles to get the lowest stats too. With the big explosion, the lowest FPS was 55. The next game is Wireframe. Running at 1080p, most of the settings are enabled and set to medium. It is a fast paced action packed game never dipped below 80 fps and the average frame rate was 100 fps. Let's play Metro Redux. The settings I am using is 1080p medium with antiscopic filtering set to 4x. This game really surprised me. The average frame rate I got is 75 with the lowest 55 fps. The next game is very demanding and I am very pleased to see it working with this hardware. The Witcher 3 is running at low settings 1080p with higher 30s. But I wanted to see if I lowered the resolution can I get a smooth 60fps out of it. Let's go to the options and video settings then graphics. Here I am going to set our game resolution to 900p. Getting back into the game I am getting 50 plus fps most of the time with the lowest 47 fps. I am really surprised to see how beautiful this game looks after all these years. The god ray, the foliage, cloud, water, small detail looks very beautiful with this game even in low settings. If I could run this game at ultra, <laughs> I miss you my RX 570. It died a few months ago. Please stay tuned if you want to see how I try to fix it in my later videos. Uh, it's going to be interesting even though this game looks good with 900p, I personally prefer it to run 1080p with higher 30s because you don't need that much FPS in adventure games like this. It's a fair trade with performance in return of quality. Next game is fairly new which is Call of Duty Modern Warfare Online. This game requires a fair amount of VRAM, which we don't have. Setting the render resolution to 720p is our best bet to run this game at above 30 fps. I think it's mostly because of our VRAM and driver limitations. The driver support of this series of graphics card ended on June 22nd of last year. Even though this game runs in this system, I won't recommend it to play in this system because it looks like shit. Next I tried to run RDR2. Unfortunately this graphics card only has 1 GB of VRAM. It shows an error message telling not enough VRAM. If I click on OK, it run as is. It starts up and shows another memory error. If I click OK, it crashes. That's why I'm not going to click OK. Let's see what happens. It starts to load the game, but it's stuck with the infinite loading. To check what exactly happened, let's go into the task manager and the GPU tab. Here you can see it used all of the view RAM and nothing left to load the game. Then Rockstar be like, bro, I told you. Next and last one is my favorite, Valorant. The best performance I got from this GPU is in this game. Unfortunately, the GPU is underutilized. Most of the time, usage is around 40 to 60 percent, maybe because of the driver issue. But I am having a hell of a time playing this game with this kind of performance. Needless to say, I am now able to utilize my 144 Hz high refresh rate monitor, which I bought for only 15,000 taka from Bikra.com. 
the experience I'm getting is unbelievable. The settings I'm using here is 1080p or low settings. The FPS never came below 180 FPS and most of the time stayed above 200 FPS. In the next video, I'm going to try to run Cyberpunk 2077 with this GPU. We'll tune up our settings to get the most out of this graphics card. It's gonna be a great video. See you in the next one.